Historically, people around the world lived in villages like this. When you live in a village, you step out of a home and most likely you will see a familiar face. When you live in a city, you step out of a home and you will see a stranger's face. For the first time in human history, man can meet and chat with strangers all day long right there in their bedroom. This is changing the way we relate to the world and this is changing our understanding of community. Today, the, the web of interactions among people um, all around the world is much higher than it ever was before. People have direct communications, direct trade, across all kinds of borders. And the real uh, issue is that governments can no longer think of themselves, that they're really only one part of the overall system. It's not a, s a series of states and the people are under them. It's the state that plays a role in the whole thing, but individual people uh, have a much bigger role than ever before. And that's just going to accelerate, just going to continue. Uh, and you know, in, in many places, the questions of language come into play, uh, geography come into play, and those kinds of relationships may become uh, more influential uh, in many cases than some faraway government agents do. So, yeah, I think the world is changing in a lot of interesting ways. The world is indeed changing. Our lives are increasingly a function of what happens in other countries. Financial engineering in the United States determines growth and employment in many parts of the world. Carbon dioxide emissions from China ends up determining crop yields and livelihoods in Bangladesh. Or a nuclear leak in Japan or an epidemic from Vietnam ends up determining public health in many parts of the world. This is a new state of affairs. This level of interdependence is unprecedented. And we need a map and a compass to help us navigate this new and interdependent world. Now, think about the way we drive. Every day, millions of people get into their cars and drive at 50 or 100 kilometers an hour. One wrong move in the steering wheel, and everything can end badly. But we drive carefree, because we have a reasonable expectation about the way that other drivers would behave. If anything can happen any time, we couldn't drive the way we do right now. We would drive far more slowly, far more cautiously. We have some expectation of the way that other drivers would behave because we have long established rules, conventions, habits. It is that mental framework that put our minds at ease. In an increasingly interdependent world, we need a comparable mental framework. And a key part of that mental framework would be global civics. Responsibilities that we take on and rights that we are ready to claim. This film was made by nine volunteer international teams who want to capture the responses of individuals from around the world to that change. In this film, you will hear voices of ordinary citizens from very different educational, occupational, cultural, and religious backgrounds. They are all addressing one question. How are we going to cope with a changing world like ours? There is a saying, umuntu ngumuntu ngabantu, which expresses the idea of Ubuntu very well. That means a person is a person by means of other persons. And I suppose the attitude that I'm talking about is the ability to see yourself in others 
and to recognize that what you are is in their gift. Because of the advancement of a technology that we are all coming so close, uh, I think it is essential that we don't consider ourselves just as a citizen of one country, but as a citizen of this whole world. Because whatever problems will be faced by us will be faced by whole world together. And uh, with, with the sort of relationships that we have with the other countries right now, uh, generally, it is essential for us to consider ourselves as a global citizen. In the world of Rujia, there is a kind of thinking of the world. The Chinese people have a word called The world of the world is the same. 在现在的这个视野的理解下，应该就包括这个地球，整个人类，都可以理解为天下，普天之下。那么普天之下，所有的人，他们的喜怒哀乐，我觉得跟我们每一个人都是息息相关的。呃，肯定是每一个人的喜怒哀乐，对于我们个体来说，都是有责任的。如果往深处说一点的话呢，叫天人感应，天人合一，不仅和人有关系，和整个世界、整个天地都是息息相应的，它是一个整个的生命体。在这个角度来理解的话，肯定是我们每一个人都是这个大生命的一一份子。I think people everywhere, every human being has responsibility for every every human being. Now, the question is whether we feel that responsibility uh, or whether we assume that responsibility. And I suppose the important question is how do we assume concretely a responsibility in a world that is too big for any of us to take care of? And so there are judgments to be made in terms of what can I actually do uh, rather than simply assuming that the responsibility is infinite. Potentially, yes, we have a responsibility for each other, but concretely we have to find ways in which each one of us can exercise that responsibility to any person that we may find that we ought to engage with and help. Dünyanın farklı yerlerinde yaşayan insanlara karşı sorumluluk hissediyor musunuz? Hayır. Neden? Neden? Neden? <gülüyor> ben biraz daha yetmişim. Neden? Ben önce kendimden sorumluyum. Yaşadığım zorunda mı yiyorsunuz zaten? Benim bir ilişkimi sorumluyum. Önce benim için sorumluyum. Hayır. Şuradan geliyorum. Peki, yabancı ülkelerdeki insanların size karşı bir sorumluluğu olduğunu düşünüyor musunuz? Hayır, düşünmüyorum. Look after your family and forget about the rest because nobody did care about you. Nobody. My opinion is that we should actually be worrying what is happening in other parts of the world because why it could be on your doorstep, it could be happening to you tomorrow. You see, because why what is for for you, like yesterday, it can be for me tomorrow, you see. So we should really check it out. Globally, we should check it out. conceptualize ourself is very much defined by the groups to which we belong so when you know the sports team that we really like has a has a victory then we sort of bask in the glory of that or if there's a loved one um, that we know that's suffering from a sickness then you know we feel bad um, and so the way in which we you know understand our own self-esteem is very much tied up with other people you know that that exists sort of our moral intuitions and tendencies exist but the self is really nothing without the other, and it's, it's largely defined you know, in relation to other people around us. 
And so that's interesting from a global civics perspective because the way in which you sort of conceptualize your role in groups, you know, both locally and globally, um, very much plays into the way in which you see your obligations to other people. Acho que tem parte. Responsabilidade. É. Porque tão longe assim, eu acho que é difícil, né? Resolver, por exemplo, eu acho que é preciso que todos se unam e que tenha um governo bom que que, que quer quem tem os meios e que pode mudar essa coisa, né? Que uma pessoa só não faz nada, né? No es el sentimiento más fuerte, el sentimiento más fuerte obviamente es para con la gente de mi país, pero sí, yo creo que eh, ya a esta altura de lo que es el mundo necesitamos todos colaborar y cooperar con todos. Básicamente, regionalmente, obviamente, ya que estamos todos separados globalmente como regiones, pero sí, yo creo que todos tenemos una responsabilidad con gente de otro país también. Acho que o que acontece é, fuera do Brasil, fuera de nuestra región, a gente debe se importar sí. É, deve tomar conhecimento dessas coisas, mas é procurar sempre ajudar quem está mais próximo da gente, né? Porque não adianta você ajudar uma pessoa que está lá fora e uma pessoa do seu lado e não está recebendo essa ajuda. Então é mais fácil você primeiro começar a ajudar aos que estão ao seu alcance, mais próximos de você, e depois você ajudar o próximo, que está mais distante.从人道来说这个发生这些灾难是对人是不好的所以我觉得就是如果你做一个中国人或者是世界上任何一个国家的人能够尽到一份力量去帮助他们这个是从人道方面来说都是好的从政治经济方面来说我觉得也是影响很大
duygu değil. Bu aynı zamanda kendi çıkarımızı, kendi yararımızla ilgilendiren bir düşünce biçimi. Çünkü biliyoruz ki biz dünyayı, insanları, dünyada yaşayan toplumları bir bütün olarak görmezsek bizim sonumuz iyi olmayacak. İnsanlığın geleceği iyi olmayacak. Ancak hepimizin birbirimizi etkilediğimizin bilincine varırsak ve birbirimiz için sorumluluk duyarsak dünyanın daha iyi bir geleceğe yönelmesini sağlayabileceğiz. says that look at the world as one family okay and in the context of our discussion i would say that let us not look at the whole world as one market okay even though our business pressures do normally you know compel us to look at the world as one market but the day we stop Look at, looking at the world as one market and the day we truly begin to look at the world as one family, uh, all the uh, problems which are so far appearing to be unsurmountable uh, can start getting at least finding some solutions on the horizons within our own lifespans. So I think uh, world as one family uh, is the message that I would like to reiterate. We cannot jump from the family to the world as if it was easy. Uh, I think if we push that too hard, if we argue that the whole world is just one family, uh, we will not be successful, we will not convince people. Uh, we, have to, we have to acknowledge the importance of proximity, of cultural ties, of language, of habit, in forming this solidarity. But I think we have to extend the circle and we have built, we have to encourage and build on more global dialogues. As communication technology allows this, it may become easier. Uh, so I think without being too ambitious, we have to be courageous. You know, Jesus once was asked by a person, who is my neighbor? In response to the command that we read in the uh, Christian holy book, the Bible, that we should love God and love neighbors. And in response, Jesus told the story, and that's gist of that story is that the neighbor is any person, no matter how close or how far from me, who is in need, whether my kin, whether, whether my co-religionists, whether my, um, uh, I have some interest in that person's, uh, person's life, personal interest in that person's life, that person is my neighbor. Therefore, a person in Germany, a person in Ethiopia is my neighbor, and especially if that neighbor is in need, he or she has a claim on me. I have a responsibility to that person. I think yes, it's reciprocal. Al tener yo con ellos, ellos conmigo deberían tener la misma. It's yours to have. It's your to have. If others should have a certain responsibility or awareness about, about what is happening in India, then we too must respond. And yes, we, we should be, uh, uh, be more aware of that. You know, presently, let's say we are aware. So let's say we should be more aware and more proactive and more interactive with, with the outside world. I think there's something very valuable about taking a cross-cultural approach. Uh, from my own experience, uh, I grew up partially in Bolivia, in an indigenous community outside of La Paz. Uh, it was with the Aymara Indians and their conception 
of the, their political and social structures were very much uh, embedded in the sense of reciprocity. So one's freedom is really actualized in the collective. And I think there's something very valuable to be learned from their kind of philosophical orientation. And so I think that by exploring various other cultures and their ideologies, uh, it's very important to global civics that we, we bring this, uh, these understandings together. And, and that, in turn, I think will uh, more smoothly create a, um, a dialogue and a, a set of universal truths that can be shared cross-culturally uh, and, and, and a way of interacting with one another around these issues. Eu acho que numa escala global é, é possível que as pessoas se mobilizem em função de, de grupos que estão passando por algum sofrimento, por alguma situação mais difícil, que estão necessitando de ajuda, mas é, eu não acredito em mobilizações muito grandiosas, eu acredito mais nas mobilizações é, é, locais, né? Claro, com intercâmbio, com, mas é, com maior enfoque na, na, nas comunidades próximas, assim, né? Isso sim, e tudo simultaneamente. Aí o global seria nesse sentido temporal, né? Ao mesmo tempo acontecendo em vários lugares diferentes, vários pequenos grupos trabalhando no mesmo sentido, numa, na mesma direção. Da la globalizzazione e a tutto quello che comporta la globalizzazione è chiaro che poi si arriva a capire che esistono dei, dei significati intrinseci della realtà globale, forse la tendenza all'empatia, un discorso di colleganza e di solidarietà. La civiltà globale è il dialogo interreligioso. Noi qui come prefettura lo abbiamo avviato come tavolo, un tavolo interreligioso con le forze religiose che sono presenti nella città di Napoli. E, e forse dal dialogo si capisce che sono più le cose che uniscono che quelle che dividono, però il percorso è sicuramente molto più lungo di quello che possiamo pensare quando parliamo di civiltà globale. Um, I don't think that I don't think there's any doubt that we all have responsibilities towards one another. At the same time, there's no question that people in developing nations have greater needs and therefore we have greater responsibilities towards them. Ma anche qui eh, direi che ehm, al di là dei, dei livelli di coscienza e di consapevolezza, eh, io ho la, la convinzione che ehm, il, diciamo, eh, sia venuto sempre più crescendo quest'idea che eh, apparteniamo a una stessa comunità e, e fondamentalmente eh, siamo legati a uno stesso destino. E, e credo che ehm, anche tutti i processi di immigrazione, di, di, di, di, di, anche, anche con aspetti che sono terribili, tragici, ci fanno capire sempre di più che noi non possiamo pensare, e soprattutto penso a questa parte del mondo che eh, risulta privilegiata rispetto al resto, che noi possiamo salvaguardare le nostre condizioni di vita ignorando come vive il resto della realtà o come sono in condizioni. Eh, sí, evidentemente, eh, bueno, yo voy a responder desde, desde mi fe y desde la fe que profeso eh, y también como ser humano, ¿no? desde ambos puntos de vista. Me parece que todos tenemos un vínculo por ser todos seres humanos. Desde la fe también te puedo decir, no, les puedo decir que eh, desde mi fe todos creemos que todos hemos sido creados por el mismo Dios. Y desde, ya desde ese punto de vista, eh, todos estamos vinculados y tenemos que estar vinculados unos a otros. Eh, es la misma dignidad humana la que nos iguala y que por eso tenemos que respetarnos mutuamente y buscar el bien común, no solamente entre los países, sino también mundialmente. Bütün insanlara karşı, hatta sadece insanlara karşı, tüm canlılara karşı ve tüm evrene karşı insan olmak itibariyle sorumluluğumuz var. Benim de içinde yer aldığım, inandığım İslami tasavvufi görüşe göre ki Hz. Mevlana'nın, Celaleddin Rumi'nin bir sözüdür. Beni Adem Aza Yegdigerent der. İnsan oldu. Birbirinin uzvu gibidir. İnsanın nasıl ki bir organı 
hastalanırsa veya ağrırsa diğer organlar bundan e, etkilenirse yeryüzündeki bir insan da hatta bir canlı da muzdarip olduğunda, rahatsız olduğunda kendini insan varsayan, insan olduğunu hisseden herkes e, bunu paylaşması lazım. Bu felsefeye göre, bu düşünceye göre. Ne var ki? E, Birçoğumuzun taşıdığı etnik, dini, aidiyetler, kimlikler, daha doğrusu bu aidiyetleri fazlaca önemsiyor olmamız, fazlaca insan olma ortak paydasını önüne getirmemiz, bu acıları hissetmemizin önünde önemli bir engeldir. Dankeschön. Die objektive Verpflichtung wäre, wenn ich äh, in einem Vertragsbündnis bin und dort sozusagen festgeschrieben ist, äh, dass ich in bestimmten Situationen helfen muss. Und äh, eine moralische Verpflichtung wäre eben, wenn diese objektive Verpflichtung nicht besteht, sozusagen helfe ich oder nicht. Wo ich mir selber als Staat oder als Person die Frage stelle, äh, sollte ich es tun oder nicht ähm, und, und es dann eben tue oder nicht. Und da bin ich der Meinung, da gilt für jeden Einzelnen eher das Gebot. 我觉得首先包括中国在内的这些国家中小学这一块的东西别人可以做这个，你不然的话，你总总是说西方为主，或者以东方为主。我觉得，或者以中国为主，或者阿伊斯兰世界，我觉得都不是那个。大家应该坐下来，就是说民主的去去确认这些东西。There are a lot of common features to the views we have received from around the world. First of all, there are a lot of thoughtful people who grapple with these issues. I'm exhilarated to hear from them. Then there is a lot of focus on reciprocity. It seems like people are ready to take on responsibilities, they also want a world where other people take on similar responsibilities. This attention to reciprocity reminds me of the ultimatum game. This is a game where one person receives $100 and has to offer a split to a second person. The second person has no say on what the split should, should be, but he can either say yes and no. If he says yes to the split, they both go home with their share of the money. If he says no, neither of them get anything. Now, this game has been played in different parts of the world for many years, so we have a good sense of how people behave. Most people offer the second person $45, $50. That's interesting, because at least theoretically, they can offer the second person only $1 and keep $99, right? Because the second person would be foolish to reject that $1, because that's better than nothing. But that's not what happens. Routinely, people in the second position reject offers worse than $25. So they are willing to forego $25 for the sake of upholding fairness. Humanity seems ready to pay a price uh, to defend fairness. And that may be the very basis of a global civics. We need to talk to each other, we need to engage each other, to find a global civics that we can all agree on. But I would say the ingredients for this conversation exist in all parts of the world, and that's good news.
，二氧化碳可能应该受到限制。按照这种大多数百分之八十以上科学家的说法，这个全球气候变暖那是一个不争的事实，而且在二零二零年左右啊，它这是一个可能是个不可逆转的一个转折点，啊。所以现在，如果人类这一块也做的事情呢，可能是延缓这个二氧这种地球界变暖的进程，啊，这是必须做的。I think what's happening relating to climate in most of the world is also a source of hope.、Uh, I think people from all over the world, from China to the U.S., from Turkey to Sweden, from Japan to Brazil, are concerned about climate and, and the continuity of our planet. So、uh, these things give hope and, and create a sense of global belonging and global civics that is encouraging. A mente assim das pessoas são são sempre iguais, entendeu? O pensamento das pessoas é, em relação a isso, a, a problemas é, ambientais, acho que as pessoas sempre pensam bastante nisso. Mas o negócio acho que falta mais é a conscientização mesmo, para que elas possam não só pensar e agir também, entendeu? Porque ela vê uma propaganda ali, se emociona e tal, mas acaba não fazendo aquilo que que é falado, entendeu? Aquilo que é, que a propaganda tenta te mostrar. Acho que tem que ter mais esse negócio de de lá conscientizar as pessoas e para fazer realmente aquele trabalho acontecer, entendeu? Não só propagandinha ali é, chegar é, chegar até mesmo é mostrar a pessoa que que esse trabalho pode trazer um retorno para ela é, tanto financeiro quanto é, tanto financeiro quanto de saúde também, né? Que aí ela vai poder respirar muito melhor e pode ganhar uma graninha também. Her şeyden önce、e, insan olunun doyma bilmeyen hırsına gem vurması、e, yer yüzündeki birçok felaketin önünü、e, yani önünü kapatabilir diye düşünüyorum. İnsan olunun tüketim hırsına bağlı olarak. Yeryüzü, atmosfer daha ziyade kirlenmekte. Buna karşı ferdi sorumluluğumuz var. Ee, biz en azından bireyler olarak bu sorumluluğumuzu yerine getirmemiz lazım. Her ne ise、e, yeryüzünü daha temiz tutacak, daha temiz kılacak, daha temiz koruyacak olan、e, biz onu yapmakla sorumluyuz.、E, yine e, İslam inancı açısından bir kuralı hatırlatmak istiyorum. bir geleneksel bir kuralı hatırlatmak istiyorum. Her ne kadar Müslümanların büyük çoğunluğu buna uyamasa da uy- uymasa da、e, der ki bu kuralda bir ırmaktan bile abdest almakta isen suyu fazla israf etme. Daha fazla tüketim, daha fazla、e, yemek, daha fazla giymek söz gelimi son kerte de、e, eğer Ötekinin felaketine seviyet veriyorsa ben orada kendimi frenlemem lazım. Ama ötekinin rahatsızlığına ve felaketine seviyet vermeyecek şekilde、e, sahip olduğum imkanları dilediğim şekilde elbette harcayabilirim. Ama bunun sınırı ötekinin、e, zararıdır. Mutluluğun da sade hayatta olduğuna inanırlardım. E, eğer o yol seçilmiş olsa bugün şikayet etmekte olduğumuz bu. Ozon kirliliğinden vesaireye kadar birçok problemden yakınmayacaktık diye düşünüyorum. O mundo não nunca vai ser melhor. É só você ler a história. O mundo não muda. O mundo é um é, é, não é o paraíso não é aqui na Terra. Eu não acredito que o mundo vai melhorar. O melhor que impossível inclusive é só você ler a história da da humanidade. Ich frage mich halt schon, 
warum die ganze Menschheitsgeschichte irgendwie, obwohl die Menschen so eine hohe Intelligenz haben, sich diese ganze Geschichte einfach so, so ein Sumpf ist. Ne? Also warum es halt nicht eine geistige Weiterentwicklung gibt. Es gibt unheimlich viele Errungenschaften und es gibt industrielle Revolutionen und so weiter und es werden Sachen erfunden und es ist alles total irrsinnig, was so abgeht. Aber ich habe das Gefühl, dass auf einer sozialen Ebene halt ganz, ganz wenig Entwicklung nur passiert über Jahrtausende. Und das ist schon eine, so eine Frage, die ich mir immer wieder stelle, wo ich denke, warum äh, entwickelt die Menschheit nicht ein, ähm, ein gesundes Verhältnis zu sich selbst und die Menschen untereinander, zueinander, warum äh, gibt es so wenig moralische Verpflichtungen und ja, das frage ich mich, das frage ich die Welt. Netice itibariyle aynı gezegende yaşıyoruz ve hiçbirimiz diğerinden daha iyi, daha akıllı ya da daha kötü ya da daha inançlı değiliz. Bu gezegende yaşamayı sürdürmek zorundayız. Birbirimize karşı sorumluyuz. Ee, hiçbirimizin ülkesi diğerinden daha üstün, daha iyi değil. Hepsinin iyi, kötü yanları, üstün, alçak yanları var insan oluyor ee, netice itibariyle. Dolayısıyla e, benim ilk önce iletmek istediğim mesaj bir, gezegeni yok etmeyelim. İki, niçin bunca insan hala birbirini öldürüyor? I guess my question to the global community really is how can we uh, generate optimism um, in facing these issues, inspire people to really care and, and to take it seriously and, and dedicate themselves uh, more than simply donating to a cause but really invest in long-term solutions to these injustices that can be solved and uh, I, I guess I would be curious to see how other cultures and peoples view these problems because I think that part of the importance of global civics is bringing different cultures together to um, get their take on, on the matter and I think that this kind of interactive dialogue um, that's not any one specific government or people uh, working on these issues together is really the fundamental to any progress that we want to make, especially when it's relating to issues of global concern. The message is we should not take progress for granted. Um, I grew up in the 50s and 60s. Maybe we were a little bit too optimistic. We, we felt that progress was almost linear. Decolonization, social democracy was built in those years. And we felt that there was no way to stop this. I think things are more difficult. Um, globalization creates a lot of anxiety and fear. So I think the, the, the best message is to continue to be hopeful and courageous, to continue to believe in progress, but at the same time to be very aware of the difficulties and to understand that every day, every week, every month has to be won again. There is no final victory over problems and over uh, violence and, and conflict. Uh, so constant vigilance, but of course in an atmosphere of hope and trust is the best way forward. I think in the modern world with all the communications that are available to us on almost a weekly basis we hear of some horrendous event. More recently we've heard about not genocide but still the killing of one's own citizens in Syria. And that very question was, was debated and, and I participated in it at Yale. Um, some say there's so much that's needed there's nothing we can do about all the problems in the world. And I simply stress that as an ideal, we have to try and do something, whether it be at Yale or in New York City or in Frankfurt or whatever. We have to try and do something. And as far as human rights are concerned, I believe that uh, we as a global uh, human community, 
you know, should be aware and take care of if they are being violated somewhere else. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it is our country or another one. When I hear of genocides and things happening, I feel a very deep, a very deep heartache, a very deep pain. Um, that's not something I want to lose sight of. That's something I want to um, bring into living reality for me. That's something I want to not be numbed to. That's the, the same kind of attitudes that might lead to something like a genocide may be there in my own in my own neighborhood, in my own community, and doing what I can to be upright and confronting those and being honest with those. No, no, creo que no lo sentiría porque como está el mundo hoy, hay un genocidio o algo terrible en el mundo, no tengo toda la información, la información que creo que llega en base a las experiencias de los últimos años no no permite sacar una conclusión de quién tiene razón, quién no tiene razón. Uno piensa que es un país que tiene razón y después se da cuenta que no era así, eh, entonces no, no participaría.这个呢这些冰慢慢慢慢又融合了，而且比以前还凸起了一块。那么这个时候，那么这个慈悲心对于融化这个冰是没有力量的，反倒增加了这个冰的厚度。那么这种制止，看你采取的方法，方法很重要。假如你
from an ethical perspective to sort of consider all of the consequences intended and unintended of intervention. But that being said, that doesn't change the fact that there's sort of this fundamental obligation. Bueno, como miembro del Parlamento Argentino, si mi gobierno se negase a colaborar en ayudas humanitarias, en, en ayudas contra pueblos que están viviendo genocidios, eh, haría una total y absoluta denuncia e intentaría que el Parlamento Argentino eh, votase a favor de ayudas humanitarias en cualquier lugar del mundo. Because I, I firmly believe all these conflicts today, whether we talk about Middle East, uh, Cyprus, Kashmir, you can list them all. All these can be solved. And I, I think we have to be much more serious as an international community to solve them. Because they, they tend to create other problems, not necessarily even in the same surroundings, because if people in different parts of the world feel that there's a lot of uneasiness because of these unsolved conflicts, they tend to, to, to rebel on, on, on other issues. And, Perhaps even it will inspire also the more extreme elements of the society. If other countries are facing the same issues, I think if China is acting in this way, it should be based on the actual situation. For example, China is facing the same issues because of their own internal conflicts and their own internal conflicts. And there are other countries with other countries that are facing the same issues. And there are other countries with other countries that are facing the same issues. 呃，各个派别的一种支持啊，或者是呃，或者其他方面的支武器啊，或者是道义方面的支持，可能加深了一些这个他们之间本来国家的矛盾。我觉得中国可能在里面可能做点调解工作，没必要做出一些这种实质性的武力干预的措施。当然，这个干预的话，还看这个国家的能力。你没这个能力，你去干预干什么？是吧？比如美国、欧洲有这个能力，他可能会就有这样的去干预。啊，我中国有这有这样的想法，但是你没这样的能力，你也干预不了。Mesela şu olabilir, öteki ile ilgili ön yargılarından olabildiğince kurtulmaya çalışsınlar, ötekini keşfetsinler. Ünlü Fransız mütefekir Jean Paul Sartre'ın Sözünün aksine, öteki cehennem değildir, ötekileştirmektir cehennem, ee, öteki tam tersine bizim cennetimizdir. Çünkü biz ötekindekini, e, öteki milletlerdeki, öteki inanç gruplarındaki güzellikleri kendimizle birleştirdiğimiz ölçüde yeryüzünde cenneti yaşarız, cenneti buluruz. Kısacası, Ötekini tanımaktan korkmasınlar, tam tersine ötekini keşfetmeye çalışsınlar derim diğer milletlere, diğer insanlara. I think the well-being of human being is clearly better if you have friends, you don't feel alone in any society. But how developed or, or, or less developed the society may be, but that unity that the friendship spring is extremely and, and you feel in any society much better than you, you don't feel alone. So that's why it's a responsibility for all of us to see that we don't even allow it. If we notice that somebody is for one reason or another left outside the circles, then I think we have to extend our kind of friendship. A lot of cars with high beams. Let's try to give them some warning. You see, they take the warnings. Nope, they don't take the warnings. My observation is that 80% of drivers that I come across don't switch off their high beams. That's unfair to the pedestrians. They don't know these two drivers are driving blindly. 
They can't see anything. I cannot see anything. That's why I usually, whenever I can, I don't drive at night. This guy again. Look, look at this guy. I wish those drivers could be more thoughtful. This is pointless. We are risking the lives of each other and the pedestrians without gaining anything. As a nation, we are new into the car culture. As a nation, we are more used to walking, riding a bicycle than sitting behind a wheel. As a nation, we are still not used to the cold between drivers and we are still not used to the potentially destructive power right there in our hands. The same thing can be said about global civics. As humanity, we have never been so globalized. We, our lives have never been so connected. As humanity, we still have not realized the potentially destructive power we each have in our individual hands. As humanity, we need time and the will to learn before we pay to a higher price. Yeah, you, you know, I think one of the central issues that we're facing facing today and issues that increasingly, uh, I think, isn't being asked, and that is a very simple and very fundamental human question, and that is, what does it mean for us as human beings to flourish? Not to flourish in this or that type of activity in which we engage. We ask that question and we ask it all the time. But what does it mean to flourish for us as human beings? What does it mean to be, live well as human being? And I think this is one of the central issues that we are facing today uh, and conversations around this issue. Obviously, many people will give different answers to these questions. Religions, different religions give different answers to this question. But I think it's very important for us to engage in sustained discussion about this issue because we will not be able to address the burning issues of future unless we have some clarity of what it means to live well, what it means for us as human beings, as individuals, and as communities to flourish. So discuss what it means to flourish as a human being. Uh, be thoughtful. I think that's the most important thing. I, I, would, rather, uh, I would rather meet in dialogue with someone who I completely disagree with their politics and their philosophy and I think they're completely wrong in all the policies, but they are approaching the question in a thoughtful way, that they're, they're willing to look at evidence, they're willing to change their mind if they're shown wrong, that they're willing to, uh, you know, think, and I think that's your most important responsibility in the world is always think.